Hello, good afternoon to all the viewers from Body Mind Soul Festival as well as Body Mind Soul Magazine. And this is Christina Tang from Body Mind Soul Live Talk, talk show number 27 today. How is everyone? How are you? How is everyone doing in this afternoon? And later, I'll be welcoming our guest, Grace, later, yeah, who is a leadership coach and also the president of International Coaching Federation, Malaysia chapter. But before I welcome her on board together with me to go through um, the topic about coach, you know, her journey as a coach, as well as, you know, she will share with us a little bit more about why do we need a coach? Because when I have a conversation with her uh, prior to this uh, live talk, I actually have some realization that I didn't know. I always thought coaching is only meant for those who can't, <laughs> who is not performing. But on the contrary, that is not the truth, right? So let's see what she will share with us later. But before that, I really want to have some chat with everyone. So for those who are our regular Body Mind Soul magazine live talk, as well as um, for those of you who are watching from Body Mind Soul Festival, a very good afternoon to everyone. Show me your love, you know, chat with me as usual. Christina, love to engage with everyone. And Eve, this is your very first time watching this live talk. What is it all about? There are so many live talk on the market, in the market, on Facebook, on YouTube, on everywhere, right? But what make us special or what make this special? It's not about me, right? It's more about the intention of the live talk of Body Mind Soul magazine that always been doing. What we always wish to do is to impact life positively. And therefore, that is what Body Mind Soul magazine has been doing it since 2014. And if you are not aware, this quarterly magazine has been in the market since 2014. And this year, we had celebrated our six-year anniversary in July. And uh, it is the very first and only holiday magazine uh, in the market that that talks about holistic positive lifestyle yeah so for all of you over there you know show me your love I have uh, Lao saying hello I have a lot of heart shape thank you very much and because of the whole uh, year this has been very interesting we did not run any on ground event like how we used to do and therefore the birth of this live talk Yes, Alan over here. Hello, another nice topic. Yeah, Alan, stay with me. How are you today? How was the session yesterday with uh, TGIF? Thank God it's free with Maple. Alan, how you feel about it? I will just take some time to warm up with everyone also. Yeah, Alan, share with me how you feel about yesterday as well because for some of you who are watching now, yeah, um, next week, next Friday, it will be me. <laughs> that is going to be doing the uh, Thank God is Free. And my topic for next Friday, the 8.30 session uh, on the Zoom, you, which you will need to register, it is about celebrate who you truly are, okay? So this is the link over here and I'll get my admin who also put up on the chat as well. Yeah, to put up on the chat as well. Yes, so that you can register and join me next Friday. So Ellen, how are you? How's your afternoon? Good. To warm up, I posted question to you. Did you? I don't think we received any question, but never mind. Uh, Ellen, later when we have Grace, you can you can uh, always publish your question on the chat. And also for this particular live talk, you know, um, actually for all the live talk, yeah, uh, we always welcome all the viewers to ask us any questions all right any questions that relates to the topic or you have any questions that you want to speak to the guests please do so i have jt great day christina and everyone thank you jt for joining us thank you so much and uh, i think without further ado i would really really wish to uh welcome you know what i always do is warm up your palms together with me and even though you are a screen away from from me but you know energy that counts your excitement that counts let us clap together before uh, then i'll get our guest out which is grace lee the leadership coach yeah so put your hands together and welcome grace lee leadership coach and president of international coaching federation malaysia chapter and there she is hello grace hi hi everybody shall i repeat what christina always say hello everybody good afternoon <laughs> I cannot say it the way you said it, but that is my way. All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here today. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Grace, how are you feeling? Are you still feeling nervous? Mm, a little bit. 
<laughs> okay, I have, I have a, I have a viewer over here. Hi, what aspect of coaching will you guys be talking about today? Ha, huh. so Yongxiang, right? Is it Yongxiang? Yongxiang, stay with us. We will go there very, very soon. Okay. Uh, Alan is also saying, yep, asking questions is part of learning as well. Yes, Alan, please continue to, to put your question and Yongxiang, continue to have your question also. Today is more about, I would say, I'll let Grace to explain a little bit, right? Grace, what aspect of coaching will we be discussing today? What aspect of coaching? All right. Anything about coaching. If you have a question about coaching, just post it. I cannot guarantee you get an answer, but you will get to post a question. All right. <laughs> we will talk more about us. coaching. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And coaching is about asking questions. All right. Oh. That's right, yeah. You get to engage with two ladies who are in red. Wow, <laughs> ladies in red. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, and Grace was like joking just now when she found out that the two of us, the host as well as the guest, <laughs> both are in red. She was asking me, Christina, maybe you can start off the day by singing Chris, uh, Chinese New Year's song. I was telling her, we have not even passed our Christmas. You want me to sing Chinese New Year's song? It's like jump cue already. But uh, hold on there. I have Vivi over here. Hi, Grace. Hi, Christina. Love from Bandung. Hello, Vivi. Hi, Vivi. And also Lily saying hi to you, Grace. Vivi and Lily. Hi. How nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, while the audience are here, let us just go straight to a little bit of the background of you, Grace. Um, as you can see over here on the screen, Coach Grace, right? So, Grace, how did you venture into coaching? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So I was not born as a coach, right? <laughs> I was born as a cute little baby growing up. <laughs> and I, I spent about 20 years of my career in HR. So wow. um, a lot of experience in um, overall HR management. Um, throughout the years, I find my passion in leadership development. So I find that when I get to work with leaders and I see them getting better, not to say they were bad, especially those who are already good and they're very strong, they're very passionate about their job. And they, they come to me and say, Grace, how can I get better in this? Grace, I want to improve in this area. And what can I do? So I was thrilled because um, in the old HR management, um, we learned that a company needs to be successful. Who is the asset? Who's the asset? Type in the chat box. Who do you say that? Type in the chat box. Who do you always hear is the asset or the biggest asset of the company? Oh, yeah, 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 so let's let's get all the audience yeah. to, call, right. uh, to so join. So that's what I always hear as well. I mean, growing up in HR profession, right? Who is the biggest asset in the company? Is it the CEO? Is it the, the finance controller? Is it the who? Who is the asset? Do you see my, anyone? My, my guest, Grace, my yeah. guest, my guest is the employees. And we yeah, have people, uh, right? one over yeah. here, staff. Staff, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we always hear a company who has big vision to say people is our greatest asset, right? But at the, uh, throughout the way, what do companies do? They manage people, they manage performance because in order to get better, the people need to be managed, right? When people are being managed, how do you feel when you need to be managed? A lot of times it turns out don't to be feel, don't counterproductive. Feel comfortable. Yes, yeah. yes, counterproductive. Uh, people feel um, being questioned, people feel not being appreciated and, and all that. So uh, as my tenure in HR profession gets longer, I start to discover more. For company to be successful, it's not about managing performance. Yes, we need mm -hmm. high performance, but it's not about managing performance, but it's about empowering, empowering leaders, empowering leaders to engage the employees, right? Ah, so empowering how, leaders to engage the employees. That's right. To engage the team members, you know, some leaders are not the owner of the company, but they are having a position that um, having people reporting to them. So instead of managing performance, I find that empowering leaders to engage employees or engage their team members works more effectively. And then coaching come you know, come out to be an important skill to do that. Because the leaders will come and ask me, Grace, you want me to engage my people. So what do I do? I bring them for lunch. Um, I've been cooking them for lunch for two weeks already, but they are still not motivated. What do I do? Right? So mm. the coaching skill is very important. 
So with that, I start to feel that, hey, why not we start first? So as a HR director at that time, I I was um, then, uh, I rally my team. I have like five HR managers reported to me. I say, come, hey, let's all, uh, we receive training as a coach, right? Let's, let's get some coaching skill. So the whole objective was to, um, to do a better job for me mm. at that time as a HR director. But mm -hmm. I feel that uh, if we want uh, leaders to, to, to have a coaching yeah. skill to coach rather than to engage rather than manage, then why not HR we start first, right? So that opened up the whole chapter of uh, me learning coaching, um, transform my life through coaching, and I fall in love with coaching. And yeah, that is a I, long answer to your question. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I pause it here because I have quite a few comments over here. Alan is saying, usually we heard coaching is for sports team because they have coach. Yeah, we hardly hear um, coaching is required for everyone, which is true. And then um, Alan over here also said, then HR job is to coach also. Yeah. Uh, Grace, I believe that is what you were sharing just now as you talk, and that was where the comments come in. And Mepo Kwan over here, effective communication between superior and subordinates encourages better teamwork, in my opinion. I believe this is very true. Yeah, Grace, what, what would you say over this one? Yeah, yeah, just to be specific about HR job is, a, uh, is also to coach. Actually, everybody uh, who uh, coaching is a skill that everybody can pick up. Uh, it was natural to start with HR because at that time, I was the HR director. So I could start with my own department, could start with my own team, right? But eventually, when we see leaders um, acquire coaching skill, when leaders start to learn about coaching rather than managing, um, the result uh, was uh, remarkably, remarkably better. And I share with you why. And yes, HR is a good party to, to start coaching, but it's also sometimes not a not in a good position to coach internally because mm. as i was having so much fun coaching internally i thought i was doing so well then my second chapter start yeah <laughs> so what happened uh later i found out that hey i thought i was coaching but actually sometimes i'm not co i was not coaching or actually many times i was not coaching because what was my job my job was a hr director i was a hr business partner working very closely to a very powerful um, regional head mm. so the person is very senior i'm very i mean my, my proximity is very close to him because i was the hr par business partner for him and later i find out that hey i thought i was coaching but they were actually uh testing the the temperature with me so if uh, i could first this thing, how does it work then it was not so obvious because it came like a coach right like a coaching session mm. then i find out hey actually this is not working because i was actually coaching the process rather than coaching the person so what what's really the difference coaching? of coaching sorry sorry grace yeah. when you say sorry. that it's very interesting mm -hmm. you are yeah. coaching the process not coaching mm -hmm. the person what what is what yeah. do you mean by this yeah, I was coaching the process because I I was so familiar with the environment. So I jump into um, knowledge or experience that I already know. And I start to guide the person. And being internal figure, um, we, we help each other, we support each other, right? So the other department heads may be greatly guided by me. Um, you know, it's not, not in a bad way, but the true coaching uh, is actually coaching the person. That means um, to help to to have a partnership with the person, mm -hmm. to ask thought provoking questions, and to help the person realize their potential in this or the, their limiting belief. Right? Say if I if you want to propose this solution, for example, oh mm -hmm. Grace, I I want to um I want to brainstorm with you. Uh, do you think this will work? If I right? But mm -hmm. the thing is, um, a coaching question would be. What makes you feel that this will not work? What mm. makes you think that this will not work? In what area is going to you know um, stop you from presenting this? Uh, so it's more into help the person uncover um, the doubts or the fear or whatever that is uh, insignificant inside of the person, so that the person is confidently uh, produce or present the piece of work that he or she already done. Which uh, a lot of time we put in a lot of hard work. We come up with a beautiful proposal. But before we are actually presenting it, we feel hesitate. Uh, is this going to work? Is this whatever, right? So mm. coaching is really helping the person to uncover the doubt, the fear, or you know whatever hesitation mm. um, 
or whatever overly confident that the person may have, mm. uh, rather than checking whether the proposal will work. Will this leader uh, buy into this idea? Or will this fit you know, your process in the company? That one is a coaching for the process. But the true coaching, the real coaching that I am really interested in doing is about coaching the person. There's nothing wrong in both areas, but I choose to focus more on coaching the person rather mm. than um, staying in the in the process. Yeah. And I, and I believe um, after you realize that uh, that position a little bit like a conflict position within as a HR director, and that's where you decided and you jump out and truly fully focus on coaching and especially focus on leadership coaching, correct? Grace. In a way, yes. Um, oh, there's, right. there's actually no conflict in doing that job. And if having a coaching skill as a HR director was fantastic. There's no, um, ah. not really a, not really a conflict. There's no conflict. But I would like, I, I really love what I do in terms of the coaching the person. So right. I feel that, hey, uh, yeah. If I have a choice, what, where do I go? So. I, I took the choice that I want to um, be able to coach the person more freely. So mm. as an internal coach uh, in the company, uh, even if the company uh, named me a uh, coach rather than HR director now, um, I feel that I may not be able to exercise my coaching freely uh, because I know too much in the company, right? I, mm. I, I, do, I mean, I want to give myself an environment that I can totally be non-judgmental and, and objective. Non Non-biased. Yes, yeah. yes. Understand. So I, I have a, hmm. Sorry, I have a few questions over here. Alan is asking, what are coaching skills? Yeah. Okay. Coaching skills. So what is number one? Coaching skill is about um, listening, right? Are we able to listen? So it, when I, uh, when the when the person sit in front of me, me and wanting me to coach him or her, um, am I able to listen without judgment? Am I able to listen um, without my prior experience? That means listen to the person uh, describing the situation as it is. That is number one very important skill about listening because uh, coaching is about non-judgmental. It's about not knowing um, how to solve the person's problem, right? Mm -hmm. So if I Listen to Christina sitting in front of me and Christina say, Grace, I'm nervous. You know, I'm going to start the talk show. That's, oh, yeah, of course, like, you're nervous. I'm also nervous, right? Oh, then I put myself in her shoes, right? But the, the fact is, this is Christina. This is not Grace, right? So if I'm coaching Christina, then I am coaching Christina. I'm looking at Christina as Christina, not as Grace um, two years ago. Or, you know, so, so the most, uh, the biggest uh, block for a coach is actually, oh, I know this. Mm. So I know this. I stop the person from discovering himself. Right? Yeah. So, that, so number that one skill is uh, listening. Number mm -hmm. two skill is asking question. Right? So what mm. is the question? Uh, if I were to coach this person, um, what what are the important questions? It's not about getting capo, busybody into the details of, the, of it, right? But asking questions is to really help the person um, do a deeper discovery. Not about, oh, so at what time did he reject your proposal? Do you think it's, if you go in the morning, it will be better? It's not about that, but it's about uh, really um, helping asking the person. Asking the right questions to empower yes. that person, right? To, to dig deeper, yes. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, Grace, as we were preparing for this live talk, I, you, you kind of like unblock a, um, a concept that I have inside me. I always thought coaching are for those who are not performing. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know those who wants to be better even should have a coach so that they can find or they can dig deeper or go deeper. So Grace, what, what is your say about this? Who is yeah, a coach? Actually, everybody needs a coach. <laughs> so a coach himself? Yes, of course. I, I have I have I have more than one coach, right? Everybody needs a coach. So um like like what I shared earlier on, it's so important to empower ourselves to to actually get out from the self-limiting belief, right? And who can ask this question? Don't try your spouses, right? The spouses will not ask you a question. Why you cannot do this? 
that that is going to be a disaster. <laughs> Secondly, don't try your siblings as well, right? So who will ask you that objective question and who, who will, will be will be totally um uh, purely curious about certain things that is blocking you, like the blind spot, for example, right? In a conversation, sometimes we see a blind spot, like when we're having a day diary with our friends. Sometimes we see a blind spot, ah, she's clearly, you know, uh, this is disaster, she's clearly going somewhere. If you have a good relationship with the person, you can point it out and the person can accept it totally. But if you have a stake in that relationship, you may not want to ask that question, you may not want to comment on that. And who else? will actually give you um ask you that 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 um important question right so mm -hmm. a, a coach is some somebody who is totally non-biased non-judgmental and who purely focusing on you when sitting uh, in front of you and and listen to what you say and from what you say and you know discover help you to discover what is not said or what is something that you know but you dare not say it Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, I think I've, I've managed my admin just pull out quite, uh, Alan's question that he sent yeah. in earlier. I've, I feel this particular question is very important, uh, Grace, mm -hmm. since we are on this, uh, this uh, area. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. are the difference between counselling and coaching? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So what do you, um, what, uh, when do you see a counsellor? When I have when I have some emotional issue or when I have mm -hmm. something that make me feel very sad, I believe, or something mm -hmm. that I cannot resolve. Yeah. So when there's pain, there's suffering, there's something that cannot resolve, see a counsellor. Mm -hmm. The counsellor mm -hmm. will sit there patiently listening to you and, you know, still uh, try to get you out from that pain, right? But a coach, a coaching process is, uh, is an empowering one. You don't need to have a problem to see a coach. In fact, many of my clients, they come to me because they want to get better and they're already doing well. They want to get better. How do I how do I pivot my business? I don't know how to manage your business, but I can help you to uncover what is stopping you from wanting to pivot or what is stopping you from thinking, keep thinking that you cannot pivot. Right. Mm. So, um, yeah. So you don't need to have a problem. In fact, you want to get better. Uh, you hire a coach so that you can get better. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, Grace, in that in that manner, can I can I safely say that uh, coaching is meant for everyone and it's not limited to manager uh, manager level. Even yeah. if you are someone as young as twenty five and you want to see a bigger picture, you want to know your higher potential, you can yeah. start looking for a coach, right? Grace, yeah. can I can I say like that? Yes. Um, and, and yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And if that's the case, Grace. How can we know which coach is suitable for us? Because there are so many coaches. Like, like for instance, for your, you, you specialize in leadership coach, uh, coaching, right? And yeah. there are life coach and leadership coach. What, what's mm -hmm. the difference between this? All right. I, and and I, I have a question I... over here also. Sorry, Grace. I have a question yeah. over here. What are the certifications and trainings to be a coach? I think this one you will go there later. Let yeah. us just talk about what's the difference because I, I myself confused. Yeah, you have mm -hmm. a life coach and you have a leadership coach. So what, yeah. what are the difference between this? Okay. So to be a coach, um remember I spent like 20 years as HR, and to be a coach, I need to restart my life, my profession life. And so I went to I went into um acquire a training that means i i start to get myself trained to be a coach so the questions that ellen asked us now what are the basic skills and uh i mean listening and asking questions is just two, two very fundamental one there are quite a few other skills so i need i i equip myself with the skills and the core competencies about being a coach and from there so those are the fundamentals just like a writer we we read we write and we do comprehensions but at the end of the day do you write do you want to write a fiction or do you want to self, write a self guide, uh, self help guide, or do you want to write about, you know, um, a tour guide, a, a tour traveling book, or whatever, right? A journal. So it's pretty, pretty much when you have the basic skill, then you can actually choose what, where do you specialize. Um, whether um, I choose leadership coaching because I have a lot of background in terms of leadership development. I feel that uh, it's something that uh, an area that I'm passionate with, and I feel that by empowering leaders. Um, it's not just that person um, receive the benefit. The whole team 
and the whole team times five maybe because the people around them, their family members, their next um, generations of their uh, in the organizations, they are all they all receive that benefit if the mm. leader gets better. So mm. I choose to focus on leadership. But in the course of me coaching leaders, um, it's unavoidable that we touch life, right? So when we say coach the person, it's not just about the leadership skill. It's also their limiting belief or is there any motivation um, aspect of it that uh, is challenging? So I find that uh, when we coach a person, uh, it encompasses uh, you know, many areas. And we have coach who specialize in executive coaching. They coach uh, the C-suites, you know, CEO, CFO, and uh, all, all the top levels uh, mm -hmm. of executive in a company. Um, mm -hmm. We have coach who specialize in life. Um, they may mm -hmm. not um, work with corporates, but mm -hmm. they will help um, individuals to become better. We have mm -hmm. youth coach who coach university wow. students. We have health coach who are not medical um, practitioner, but focus on uh, helping people uncovering, you know, health related, um, uh, get better in their health uh, related uh, aspects in life. So uh, what, do you, what do we specialize? My experience is that it's, uh, it's really depends on what resonate with the person. After receiving the, the, the basic coaching training, then mm. I feel like, hey, I can, I can do better in leadership coaching. I venture more into leadership coach. Then I acquired probably other certain models or, you know, in terms of leadership. Some people mm. may coach, may specialize in communications, right? So it depends mm. on um, the person, the coach. Yep. Well, uh, so JT is asking, what are the certifications and trainings to be a coach? So is it, I mean, there are a lot of coach in the market. How do we know, um, how do we find the right coach, the right qualified coach for us, especially those who wish to become a better version of themselves? Yes, yes. That's a very good question, JT. Um, so being a HR director, the moment I say, oh, I want to become a full-time coach, I, I'm, I, I, I need to answer my own question, right? How would the client um, decide to hire me? So as a HR director, I... And I, I know that if I were to hire a coach, I want to hire somebody who is certified, who who is um, uh, who who has received uh, enough training, who has coached enough, and who come from a reputable um, organization, right? Mm -hmm. But the coaching industry in Malaysia uh, is uh, is not so much like a consulting. We know, oh, this is the place that we go for coaching and all that. We do have a lot of um, qualified coaches. Um, who work on ourselves, who work on our own, right? So like I have a company uh, uh, by myself and I, I provide coaching services and we have many counterparts who operate in this way. So coaching certification and coaching training is very important for not just organizations, but um, individuals to decide whether um, this, this is a person that who really focus on, um, you know, the person and discovering um, what is deeper inside rather than focusing on coaching the process, right? Mm -hmm. So like, like career coach can focus a lot more on the processes, like, you know, help you identify what's, uh, what, uh, what kind of career or what direction you want to go. But a career coach can also choose to focus more on yourself and help me discover what is it that I need to know better for me to really um, uh, have an inspiring career. Right. Mm. So a certified coach who receive adequate training um, means a lot uh, if I were to hire a coach as a HR director. So mm. I had to search um, and I found um, ICF. Actually, ICF didn't just come to me, but come from a training provider. So when I start to receive training, I start to find out more about coaching. ICF stands for International Coaching Federation. It's the biggest um, um organization uh, with um, professional coaches. So mm. uh, ICF is not a, a company, uh, but it's rather it's a federation. So mm. ICF provide um, coaching certification, um, ICF certified coaches and also certified training providers. And, okay. Mm. 
so so we that first thing if we are to find yeah. a coach make sure that yeah. they are certified one of the way to find out whether they are certified or not is to go through um international Feder uh, international coaching federation and you are happen to be the malaysia chapter <laughs> president as well so uh yeah. for any one of you who wants to know if you are interested to become a coach yeah. if you have that passion to empower others to inspire others you know to also coach a person to become a better version you can check it out on this website i believe i'll get my admin to pull out uh www dot let's see she's panicking looking for that yeah www.coachfederation.org yeah grace so yeah. thank you very much for sharing that but grace i have a very important question over here from the floor mm -hmm. uh, before that um i have trisha saying coaching is meant for everyone with a lot of uh, in agreement and i have michelle asking what's the difference uh, different of a coach and consultant grace yeah okay so we talk a lot about coach right so a lot of times when we find consultant is when we need an answer straight away say i want to implement a change management uh, system in the company so mm. i get a consultant who help me uh, to tell me all the uh, to do a study maybe in the organization tell me all the processes how am i different from other companies what is the gap and what i need to do in order mm. to reach the gap right so a coach who comes in will ask me some questions first to understand the situations and also to be able to um, know more about is this really something that you want to implement right so a consultant prescribes solution and guide you into implementing it a coach mm -hmm. helps to uncover um, the why and then um, take action into uh, implementing it if you truly want to implement that right mm. weight loss weight loss for example very popular nowadays weight loss a weight loss consultant come in and say grace uh, for for your height you know this is the the ideal weight and to reach this ideal weight in um in uh, 24 months you need to do this do this do this do this you need to eat this eat this eat this don't eat this don't eat that you know th that kind mm. of thing consultant but a coach will sit down you know and really help help, help you uncover what what is the what is the deeper desire because a lot of people went through the same weight loss program but they may not be uh, having the same result mm. because everybody is different and mm. believe it or not sometimes we may think that we need to lose weight but we actually don't want to lose weight but why oh wow what is stopping you from losing weight yeah and what is it that i need to let go so that i can start to lose weight ah so that's where a coach comes in a consultant is analyzing the situation give you a solutions and then lead you to execute but a coach is uncover what is hidden behind that particular situation sometimes it also relates to emotions right grace Mm -hmm. yes a lot a lot of emotions yeah when we go deeper inside what is in there <laughs> there's mm. a lot of emotions right so mm. so grace for for you who have been a coach for so many years how long how long has it been so far how many years huh? um i started coaching full-time in 2015 yeah wow but but because along the way you have the profession as hr and there's where you also exercise coaching skills as well yeah but professionally it's about five years yeah. wow okay so I, I asked a question just now does the coach needs a coach yes yes definitely definitely um so i started learning coaching in 2010 and i become a full-time coach in 2015 um it cannot be done without having a coach for myself right mm. so um because there is a lot of um a lot of things inside there so other than other than having a coach there are also so many other things um, that we need to uh, prepare ourselves um to be equipped as a coach right does a coach needs a coach definitely the answer is positive yes <laughs> <laughs> and what other you know, beside all those uh, certifications or the coaching skills that is offered in um, federal uh, coaching federation, 
I'm sure that they have uh, all those uh, certification programs, you know, that anyone who wanted to start their career as a coach, they can also find information from there. But other than all these um, certified coaching skill sets, what other thing to you that you feel is important as a coach that we need to be aware? All right. Uh, that is a very good question because this is to, to have the skills and the coaching model is probably 50% of the equation. Mm. Another 50% um, needs uh, to be accomplished as well. So mm. who are you is how you coach. Who are you oh. is how you coach, right? An aggressive person may coach in a more aggressive mode because that is the style. A calmer or more um, gentle person may coach in a different dimension. That is the style. I'm not talking about just personality, but um, I discovered early um, in, in my coaching career that like what um, I shared just now, listening is a very important skill. Why mm. is it so important? Not because I want the person to think that I'm a good coach, I just sit quietly and listen. But it's so important because it helps me not to judge. If I can listen carefully, I can listen actively, then I do not judge. When I do not judge, the, judging doesn't mean that, oh, the person is bad, or it's not that kind of gossiping judging. But judging also comes as like, Oh, I think he can do this. I think why not let him try that? That is a form of judgment as well. Because mm. when I start judging, I will go into solution mode and I try to prescribe. And that mm. is the no-no for a coach, right? Mm. So in mm. order to, so first step is to tackle listening. If I want to be able to listen actively, I need to quiet my mind. Wow. I need to quiet my mind. I need to quiet my mind in front of the person. I need to quiet my mind all the time so that I can listen carefully. I can listen actively, right? Mm. So um, in 2015, I started to look around. Hey, I want to quiet my mind. What do I do? Okay, so come from a lot of recommendations, meditation, right? Mm. Wow, meditation. I'm not only quieting my mind, but I may fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so but I say, oh, you cannot. If I want to be a good coach, I must find a way to quiet my mind. So I started my journey of um, meditation. So meditation not just helped me to quiet my mind. It helps me to manage my emotion, to gain clarity, and also to create a desired path that I actually flow in life. If I flow in life, I can flow in my coaching sessions. I do not need to know the outcome. I do not need to know the answer. I do not need to worry for the person who is talking to me now, right? So I find um, meditation really helps me a lot. And my journey of meditation leads me to a whole lot of self-discovery. And I feel that because I could quiet my mind, I actually empty out a lot of space for me to um, to have a relationship with myself. And it's through that journey I discovered that when I have a relationship with myself, mm. I can have a more meaningful relationship with another person. Mm. And that helps me uh, in my coaching journey. This is, this is very interesting. So uh, I'm going to pause you here for a while, Grace. Uh, at the same time, I really want to engage with the crowd. If any one of you have any questions about coaching or, or anything, any curiosity, any questions you want to ask Grace, you know, this is the very good chance for all of us here to understand better because one of the greatest thing that I discovered through Grace was anyone and everyone can be coached it's not until it's not about you are not performing you are at your worst state of your life that's why or that's where you need a coach it is when you are at the peak of your life that's where you should even have a coach so that you can propel further at the same time um you know i love how grace was sharing with us that uh listening in order to be actively listening you have to quiet down your mind and our mind has you know, as a human living in a concrete jungle, uh, living in a city, our mind is constantly very active. And a lot of time, like what Grace, you say, uh, for me, when when I, I'm also in a, in a position of leading a team as well, a lot of time when you are talking and when you're sharing just now, it also helped me to reflect. Did I, most of the time, am I leading that person based on their performance and based on my own experience or am i empowering that person did i did i listen actively did i did i ask the right questions did i help 
not help? Did I empower or I'm, am I giving a solution? So thank you very much, Grace. And this is really eye-opening for me and it helps me to do a lot of reflection while you are talking. I'm, I'm listening actively as a host. At the same time, I have to look at the comments. At the same time, I'm learning as well. So I'm having a lot of benefits just by hosting this live talk. I have... I have Ellen over here asking you a question, Grace. Um, for general public, how one pick the skills example or any recommend, uh, recommending uh, books from you? Which is, Ellen, you're lucky. Right before the talk, Grace was asking us, uh, can I recommend some books to the public, you know, uh, something that I love, something that I like, something that I find it useful. So Grace actually prepared a few books to recommend to every one of us. Yeah, so Grace, do you mind to share? Yeah, uh, yes and no, because um, the, the book, remember I talked about two equations, the 50%, which is the skill and the model, and the 50%, mm -hmm. which is to equip yourself uh, to become mm -hmm. a coach, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, if Ireland is asking for the skill side, then I don't have a book today because um, there's a lot of coaching book out there and basically um, the basic fundamental skills are very um, common, right? That means mm. you can actually search for it or you can leave your contacts. Uh, I can actually um, come back to you on those. But I feel that the books that really helped me um, to be centered with myself and to, to build me as a coach are the, the other 50% of the equation. So for example... So, so Grace, I stopped you here for a while. Yeah. So, so you say the 50% is skill sets, another 50% is a relationship with self. That's right. So um, in your own opinion, how that really helped you as a coach? Because just now you, you couldn't have a, a deeper elaborations on this. Mm -hmm. By having a, a relationship with self, how, that, how did that help you as a coach to guide or to empower your client better? Mm -hmm. Uh, having a relationship with myself means I don't have to, I don't have to judge the other person. I don't have to prescribe the solution because I know that I am at the right place at the right time. I don't have to, um, I don't have to blame myself that, ah, oh, why did I take this client? Or, oh, no, I cannot help this client because every coaching session is a session that, um, you know, that, that is helpful for both, whether the coach or the client. And mm. if I do not have so many judgment, whether for myself or for the client, then I can listen fully. And just now, uh, Christina, you said, oh, I'm listening, but I don't want to miss the point. I want, also want to write down and I also want to pay attention to the chats. So, but if, and, and, and when I am uh, having a team meeting, how do I know whether I ask the right question or not? Or am I really empowering them? So if, you, if I have a good relationship with myself, I don't have any of those. Wow. Anybody. Because I know everything is adequate and we are at the right place at the right time. Not in a woo-woo way. That we are always at the right place at the right time. Nothing is um, impossible. Coincidence, but, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is to really believe and be in that zone, right? So what if this is the wrong client? What can you do about it now? So what if you really cannot help this client? What mm. can you do about it now? Right. Mm. So if we can always be in the now, we can focus on this moment. We live in this moment. If we live wow. in this moment, we are in this moment. We live in this moment. We don't have to worry and we don't have to prescribe. We don't have to think that whether this will work or this doesn't work. Of course, pick up some books, learn the skills and be totally comfortable with the self. This this concept of relationship with the self came in a very um, very profound for me when I was um, uh, in a trip to Egypt last year. Mm. Um, I went to Egypt for a, a trip. Um, it's supposed to be some um, a, a spiritual trip. That means uh, it's a meditation retreat. So I went there, um, not with my usual group. Um, so in that group is uh, most of them are strangers to me. I hardly know anybody. And it was almost two weeks I was um, in Egypt in different um, historical places and all that. I felt like I am surrounded by so many people. I even have a roommate who is, my, who is a stranger. The lady is from Canada. She's a stranger to me, but she's my roommate. I mean, we, 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 are, we all go in one, organi one uh, organization um, in a tour. So 
in the whole spiritually uh, spiritual discovery i have a very profound moment that hey i am here surrounded by so many people and i have such a good relationship with myself wow i am so connected with myself never before i don't have to worry about getting to know this person um from australia that person from the us or this person from Penang, you know but i but we i'm totally comfortable know them or not know them and we are totally comfortable existing in the same space knowing that we are all here for a reason i was there for my own reason she's there for her own reason and we don't have to hold hands and you know um, go everywhere together and yet there is a profile relationship that is being developed and later on i discover that i just deepened the relationship with myself yeah mm -hmm. can can i can i say that when you deepen when a person deepen a relationship with themselves it's more about more connected with themselves and having more faith trust confident and also at the same time very peaceful with that themselves inside mm -hmm. them and with yeah. that kind of stability with that kind of calmness with that kind of peace that that person carry inside when this coach has all this plus the skill set it add values to the person that is right in front of them who require a coaching session yeah. because that's where you also manage to practice the listening actively and mm -hmm. also asking the right questions that help to propel a, 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 a person can can i can yeah. i say like that yes yes that is what you uh, have taken away from this session <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. waiting over here saying a wow statement. Only a good relationship with ourselves can we have good relationship with others. Thank you, thank you, JT. And, JT, you uh, can cover that yourself. Uh, that is my experience. <laughs> wow, that's very beautiful. And I have Alan. Relationship also need a coach. How to build good rapport? <laughs> yes, I believe so. And going back to the uh, books that you wish to recommend to all of us. So, Grace, mm -hmm. what are the books books for the the fifty percent of of what you have experienced in Egypt? Oh, okay. The book is not about Egypt, right? Uh, the books yes. are the books that I've I've been reading, and I feel um very uh, useful. Um, this book, uh, but this book is quite deep, yeah. If uh, you can, you can read this book first. The surrender, the the surrender experiment by Michael Singer. That really um, teaches us to go with the flow, flow in life, and this is real story, okay. And of course, some of you may be familiar with this book, A New Earth. Uh, this is totally um, inspiring, and that helps oh, me to to your life purpose wow yes this this really i read this uh during mco like in march I, I read this and i couldn't put it down and it helps me to anchor so much so i was in egypt in september october last year and mm. i've been having a lot of um uh, i mean i i feel myself evolving uh, because of that um profound um, experience with myself and and then uh, these books i which i couldn't read earlier on uh, but in March, I started reading it. I couldn't put it down. And if wow. you can, if you want to take an adventure, read this book um, from by Muji. Okay. And that, another book which is very good, very easy to read is this one. Uh, wait, here. <laughs> Life on Earth Mastery. Mm. This basically explains um, a lot of things uh, to me uh, that, that the book talks to me. So other than... Uh, the coaching um, skills that uh, we can normally acquire by attending, you know, a coaching training. And normally the, the coaching trainings in Malaysia nowadays are, are very good. If you look at ICF website, you can mm. search for coaching training, which is accredited by ICF, uh, International Coaching Federations. And they are all good um, because they have been certified by ICF. They are preparing us to become, a, you know, a certified coach. And we have to go through rigorous hours of training. We have to sit through assessment. We have to make sure that we coach above certain number of hours. The first level is 100 hours of coaching before we can become a certified coach. So wow. those, those is easy to find. You find the training and you get, get yourself certified. You have the skills and the model. But what really makes you a coach that you want to be is the other 50% of the equation. 
who you are is how you coach. Wow. Who you are is how you coach. Such a simple sentence, but carries so much wisdom weight into it. Because a lot of time, um, when we even even for me, Grace, um, as a host over here, I I too have to go through a lot of rounds of finding who I am and what makes me, you know, what what makes this show unique or or what what is what is unique for us or for body, mind, soul. So that sentence really resonate and echo in my heart. Let me see. Uh, yeah, so even my admin is, is commenting at the back so profound. <laughs> but guys, don't be, uh, don't, don't, don't be so um, taken back. Like You don't have to wait until, oh, I have to discover my life purpose. I have to know who I am. That No, discovering the self is a journey. It's not a destination. All right. So every step we discover, I went to Egypt only in September, October last year. But of course, I've been to many other meditation retreats. Do I need to wait until I complete everything before I can coach? No. You know, uh, every uh, every stage of my self-development um, brings me different opportunity to sit and coach um, different clientele. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's a journey of self-discovery, it's a journey of self-mastery, it's a journey with partnering with another person to see us blossom at the same time. Every coaching session, um, both parties benefit, both parties learn something, both parties have the discovery. Um, mm. Yeah, it's whether or not we know it, we notice it and we take it, uh, we, we write it down and we use it or not. So mm. all this discovery and realization that we acquire from the coaching session um it can be profound but if that stays there then it goes it will go away together with the end of the coaching session but taking action is most important because coaching is about taking the person from point a to point b right say the person come and say i inspire to here to become this or to overcome this so there is a point a there's a point b mm. what happens to bring this person, that's why it's a partnership to mm. actually journey together until the person reach the point B. That mm. is coaching, all right? It's the, you you move together, you know, not like okay, you go lah. <laughs> you walk five steps and then turn left, right? We don't do that. We we journey together. The coaching. I, I have, yeah, I have a question for you, Grace. So we mm. have talked a lot from the coach perspective, right? How about Talking from a perspective of a person being coach, so mm -hmm. like let's say you are coaching me, right? Um, how would I know whether I have found you as a right coach for me? That's one thing. Second mm -hmm. thing, how would I know whether am I progressing? And how, like what Alan over here uh, also asked, there are three questions in total. Oh yeah, how one apply coaching in learning? So how, how will I, first is how will I know once I started the session with you, how will I know that you are really the, the right coach? Because it's not nothing to do with whether you are good or you are not good. It's nothing. It's about whether it fits me or not, right? As, as a person who received the coach, uh, coaching material or coaching yeah. session. And the second thing is, how, how do I know whether am I progressing or not? Mm. Yeah. It's actually for you to answer, you know. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, how do I know whether this is the right coach for me? It's up to me to choose which coach I work with. Mm. I, do not, uh, I, I don't have obligation to work with any coach if I'm not comfortable, right? So normally, um, the coach will, you have a, a familiarization session and exploration conversation with the, with the coach in order to decide. Um, whether you want to, you you would like to have this coach to journey with you, to partner with you from point A to point B. So normally, you you get an explore, you you get to explore this first, and then you ask all the questions that you want to ask, or you may just want to experience a session, a coaching session with this particular person, uh, before you actually choose uh, who you would like to work with. All right. Mm. And, and once we start, uh, say, okay, you choose to work with this coach A and coach A will then sit down and say, okay, what is it that you want to work on? What is point B for you? Or I want to work from, uh, I want to move from point A to point B. So what is point B for you? And how do you know that uh, whether um, you, you've reached point B, mm. right? So you define that first at the beginning. Once you define mm. where you want to go, how does it look like when I reach point B? Then you start the coaching process. Yeah. 
And usually, how long is the coaching process in general? How long was the how long was the last time you managed to change one of your habits? Oh, few months, and I believe maybe some are few months. Uh, six months, I would say, is probably a a good period. Uh, minimum <laughs> five six months, or some are one year, eighteen months. Yeah, mm. it depends on what is it that you want to work on. Um, if it's if it comes with uh, a few other support, say in the organization, um, there's a change. Um, the leaders are supported by other uh, facilities or or, or systems. Then mm. maybe it's, it's easier to fix a period. Um, but if we were to work on individual uh, behavioral change. Mm. Um, is probably easily a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, now I get a better idea as well. So over here, I have Mabel Guan also. So it's like pacer in marathon journey together, uh, the coach as well as the client. Um, yeah. yeah. So Grace, if there's one last takeaway for our audience of today's topic, coming from you, a leadership coach, as well as the president of International Coaching Federation Malaysia chapter, what is that one last thing that you would really love our audience to take home with? Yeah, I would really um, encourage you, don't rush out from here. Like I know you're in FB, you know, there's so, so many other interesting things you want to flip or you want to swap your phone, but just give us, give yourself two, three minutes and write down what is your relationship with yourself at this moment. What is the relationship with yourself? What do you like about yourself? What do you not like about yourself? What is it? What is one thing that you want to change about yourself? Wow, this come in perfectly uh, towards almost the end of the year. Yeah. And, and usually we start our New Year uh, uh, what, resolution. Mm -hmm. And this year, I believe a lot of our resolution has been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I say that because um, everybody deserves a connection with the self. We've been busy connecting outside. We've been busy... Um, handling things around us or making sure people are all right um i'm not saying a, you know a, a spa for yourself or just you know be able to go into a salon nowadays could be a luxury right but it's more like do do, do i have a quiet moment that i'm not thinking about anything else for two minutes just for myself yeah let's see i have a comment Ellen, before you ask me how, how this year resolution progress, what is your relationship for yourself, with yourself that Grace is asking? Yeah, that's a very good question for us to ponder. You know, right before we end this live talk together with Grace on this beautiful Saturday, um, it is also very good for us to take some time to reflect. What is your relationship with yourself? Like what Grace has found it so impactful when she realized her relationship with self and she gone deeper with herself and how that has also helped her as a coach as well so uh if you feel it's not um convenient to share but it's okay you can type it on for yourself as as a as a reference yeah and also um you know for ellen who have asked for the other books i believe grace can share with you privately yeah uh, grace uh, we will connect you with alan directly as well so that you can talk to sure. him also yeah. so for all of you who have any question this is your last round to ask any other question and because usually the facebook comment will pop up slightly slower on my screen so last question from the crowd if not we will really call it a day and thank you so much for having grace here together with us i learned a lot you know, understand the coaching perspective. Also, we understood, um, you know, everyone is coachable. Yeah, even a coach require a coach as well. Even Grace is having few coach uh, herself as well. And also, yeah, so thank you to all the viewers. And really, the last question from Grace is very profound to me. What is your relationship with yourself? Yeah. What is your relationship with yourself? It's really a good question for us to think about on this beautiful Saturday. And that with that, we'll, uh, with that, I'll say thank you to Grace. 
thank you for joining us this Saturday. And um, thank you for uh, sharing with us so many different tips of yours and your personal journey. I have Alan over here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, JT, I started to love the all of my being. Wow. wow. JT, you are very fast, JT. <laughs> yeah, JT, thank you for sharing. And, and for also, me. yes, and also uh, no extent. <laughs> No extend, no extend for today. <laughs> no extend for today. You can always watch the replay of this live video. Um, so thank you very much. A very good afternoon to all of you and have a great weekend. Thank you, Grace, very, very much for coming in and sharing with us. And with that, I will also end this uh, session with our closing montage a little bit over here. Thank you, thank you. I have one last before I pull it out. Thank you so much to everyone and goodbye. Have a great day. Let me see.